how to overcome laziness and become successful in practice. Oh, namaste. Every day. Every day you can read for one hour, two hours, three hours. Read Swami Shivananda. And you will create the strongest desire to practice. You can also read the teachings of other saints. Shiva Samhita, Garanda Samhita, Hatha Yoga Pradipika, Shachakra Nirupana, texts of Baba Gorokshanath. texts of Sri Shankaracharya and meditate on impermanence, the law of karma, the preciousness of a human birth, the suffering of samsara. Basically, all this is called the cultivation of mumukshutva. Laziness will not go away until you cultivate mumukshutva. First, mumukshutva, and then laziness will pass. You can't just overcome it. You can't motivate yourself to practice unless you're seriously engaged in cultivation of mumukshutva. What is mumukshutva? Mumukshutva is the unyielding intention to become free, to come closer to God, and to attain liberation and enlightenment. It is the strongest intention that will transform you and will challenge your laziness. And such an intention is not formed immediately, it takes years to form, but must be preceded by acquisition of faith. There are those who have faith but do not have mumukshutva, and therefore cannot practice. So first you have to obtain faith, and then realize that you do not have enough qualities to realize liberation, and you need mumukshutva, development of certain qualities and create an intent to obtain liberation, so then to overcome laziness. It's essential to develop good habits for yourself. For example, dinacharya means a proper daily routine. I wake up during Brahma Muhurta. After I wake up, I do specific yoga practices, and I keep a diary of my practice. Here is Swami Shivananda and his disciple Swami Vishnu Devananda. They recommended logging this into a journal every day, and every day write down how many practices I've done and how much service I've done, what holy texts I've read, how many japa circles I've read. And you have to act like an athlete who's preparing to compete in the Olympics. Athletes like that tend to live on a pretty harsh schedule. They have a fairly strict diet, work out several times a day, and supervision and guidance from a coach. And you can't overcome laziness alone and live that kind of regimen. That is why you need the company of others like you to realize mumukshutva. Such as a group of like-minded people is a dharma center or ashram. And there, you can live in a routine, keep a practice journal, and cultivate willpower. And thirdly, the aspect of building willpower is to practice concentration The fourth aspect, you need help of a refuge and blessings from higher divine beings. So you should offer daily prayers to Shiva, Lord Dattatreya, the tree of refuge and your guru Parampara. The prayers are roughly along these lines. O Lord Shiva, Lord Dattatreya, O Guru, Paramguru and all the saints, God, Siddhis of my lineage, please bestow your blessings upon me to become a successful yogi, to advance in my practice, to become a strong sadhu.
And in order to do that, you can recite various mantras that point to the quality of Shiva. These are the mantras from the Shiva Sahasranama Stotra. Om Yogine Namaha. To Yogin Shiva as Yogin is worship. Om Maha Yogine Namaha. Worshipping Shiva as the great Yogi. Om Siddha Yogine Namaha. Perfect Yogi worship. And when you gather all of these aspects, reflections on impermanence, the preciousness of human birth, the law of karma, the strong will, the circle of companions, prayers to divine beings, develop intention for Mumukshutva, living in circle of like-minded people, controlling one's daily routine. All of this together will work. We should desire to practice every day by inspiring ourselves, roughly like this. I aspire to practice. I will practice sadhana. I want to become a sadhu. I will definitely become a strong, successful, and experienced sadhu. And for that, I'll do some things. I will do this, this, and this. And this intention should grow day by day. And it has to flow into real action, which is to actually practice. And just as they say, the appetite comes while eating, so the desire to practice comes as you immerse yourself in the practice more and more. What else is important? It's important to eliminate the absorption of useless information, radio, books, the internet, and television. Anything that does not lead to liberation from the sadhu's point of view is useless information. Also, limit any kind of communication that does not lead to liberation, because communication and fellowship with those who are striving for liberation is inspiring. Associating with those who don't aspire to liberation only dilutes and makes you more so weak and unfocused in your spiritual life. That's why sadhus often become hermits or monks to limit their circle of socialization, to limit their circle of information. They live in the mountains, in the forests, or ashrams. And to create such a strong intention to go on the path to God, on the path to liberation, to go forward, forward and forward, only forward, without turning anywhere. And so when a sadhu cultivates in himself such a steady iron will, only forward, forward to liberation. I will certainly practice for many hours like the saints of old age. I will have asceticism, tapasya, rigid routine, control, self-discipline, and willpower. Such person becomes very collected, gets this kind of virabhava, the attitude of a yogi hero. But here, another trap is waiting for. When such yogi simply becomes a total will, honed for liberation, like a passionate athlete training to reach his goal and win, that kind of mindset. Victory is everything. Everything else is nothing. And the trap is that he loses the way of self-surrender, the effortlessness of natural relaxation. He becomes overly tense and somewhere he misses. So the saints say, be careful with will and intention. Will and intention should be strong, and you should really be very strongly attuned to liberation. Still, at the same time, you should be effortlessly relaxed and natural because grace comes into the natural, spontaneous mind and not into the strictly motivated and rigid. Hence, the saints say that the faster you go, the further away you are from the goal. 
This is also important to consider. And that when building willpower and overcoming laziness, as it said, do not splash the child with water, do not fall into the other extreme, and so it is necessary to avoid these two extremes. And the path of the sadhu lies right in the middle. It is the path of collectedness, purposefulness, integrity, and will, sharpened for liberation. Still, at the same time, it is the path of play, lightness, softness, relaxation, effortlessness, spontaneity, and surrendering oneself to divine grace. Oh, namaste.